my name is Benz and welcome to another episode of the Waldenburn podcast. My name is Emily and I am so glad that you are here with me today. Today I am drinking <laughs> just some plain unsweetened almond milk. I have found that this has been invaluable in helping with the whole pregnancy, heartburn, acid reflux, that sort of thing. Apparently almonds really help with it, but I'm not a huge fan of almonds, so almond milk it is. <laughs> and I've been really, really enjoying it. It's become such a tasty drink for me to just drink just plain almond milk, unsweetened, or unsweetened vanilla, one or the other. But it has been so, so helpful, um, especially if I'm getting a lot of acid reflux or whatnot right before I go to bed. I can drink a cup of almond milk and go to sleep and it really helps. So, I really recommend it. <laughs> I might be looking a little bit flush and my hair is doing its thing. Um, I already went on what I hope to be one of my walks for today. It's a beautiful morning outside, kind of overcast, in the mid-60s Fahrenheit and a little bit breezy so it's just a beautiful beautiful morning out there and I went ahead and took a little walk so <laughs> I'm a little bit sweaty and I also took some pictures for a blog post so yeah <laughs> today this episode is definitely going to be very sewing heavy I have not done much knitting um, I've been feeling kind of uninspired a little bit by it recently here and very very inspired by sewing so you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but I do have a couple of updates to do with knitting, and then I have some finished sewing projects, some projects I want to, that I'm working on, that I want to talk about, a little bit of a pattern haul, and some books that I want to talk about. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and dive right into it, and we'll just see how long this episode ends up being. And per usual, when it's a nice day outside, I do have my windows open. There might be some wind breeze noises that hit the microphone, but hopefully it won't be too bad. <laughs> so, knitting. First off, well, let's talk about this one because it's a, a project that I have been working on for a while now. Let me see here. I am in the process of knitting a Andrea Maori so faded sweater and here's where I am at. I think last time I was in the process of knitting the neckband. I have since knit the neckband. This might look like a really long neckband. The reason for that is I am planning to stitch it, fold it over and stitch it down. Let me see if I can sort of demonstrate this. <laughs> Something like that rather than that. So that's why it looks like it's really long. And I am in the process of knitting the first sleeve. And yeah, there isn't a whole lot to say about it. It took me a little bit to get the sleeve on the needle, but I have it on the needle now, so that's good. I was doing Magic Loop, but I really find that to be very not, not, not intuitive. I know how to do it and it's not hard. It doesn't seem to give me the same rapid rhythm or smooth rhythm that double pointed needles do. I am a big fan of double pointed needles. <laughs> uh, I know that there, there's kind of a debate that goes back and forth in the knitting community on which way is more convenient or better or whatever, but I just personally find that I just seem to work really well with double pointed needles, so you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm knitting this in my hand dyed yarns. Um, these are just some different colorways. I've got this mauve, a variegated, and then this brown. Love how the colors look together. They look amazing. <laughs> um, I'm really, really hoping that I will have enough of this variegated color left to make a pair of shorty socks. I would love that so much. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm knitting this on the in the third size. I think the 38 inch bust. I'm definitely doing the cropped length, and I think I'm going to do the full length sleeves, but we'll see if I get tired of it. <laughs> I am using a US size 5 for the sleeves. It's the same size I used for the body, and I used a US size 3 for the neckband and the hem ribbing, and I'll do the same thing for the cuff. And I'm kind of going back and forth on whether or not I want to do a very fitted sleeve or if I want to do a little bit of like a slight balloon sleeve where you just knit the sleeve straight then rapidly decrease right before the cuff and then do the cuff. I think that that looks so cool because it's not 
too much of a statement sleeve, but it's kind of fun. So I'm thinking about it. Well, we'll see. That's all I have to say about this. I just have not been in the mood for doing much knitting recently, which, you know, it comes and goes. That's kind of what creative happens, at least for me, with creative endeavors, is that there'll be a period of time where I just couldn't imagine doing anything but knit on a sweater, and then there's times where I'm just like, ah, I don't really want to work on that. <laughs> and then um, about a week ago, I realized that I didn't have any very plain, simple knitting to work on while I was um, at church or just chilling, so I cast on a sock. <laughs> they are truly the most, like, I don't know, like a vanilla sock is one of the best, just don't have to pay any attention to it, knitting projects. So I don't have very much on it. <laughs> But here we go, I've got the cuff and then I'm about halfway done with the heel. And I'm knitting this in my other skein of West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply Yarn. And this is in the colorway Robin. I was initially planning to make these socks in December, along with a lot of other creative plans, but, <laughs> but pregnancy threw me for a loop and I was just tired and had like no creative energy. So it didn't happen. But that's okay. Anyway, I am loving this yarn. I just recently, I think I talked about it in my last podcast episode, just finished knitting a pair of shorty socks in the West Yorkshire Spinners um, Signature 4 Ply Passion Fruit Cooler colorway. And I really, I so far, I very much like this yarn. The weather has definitely, definitely not been like wool sock wearing sort of weather. So I don't know how they wear, but... I will find out in the fall <laughs> when it cools down again. Yeah, so I just I just started this um, doing my typical sock knitting recipe, 56 stitches on US size 1 or 2.25 millimeter double pointed needles. I did about 15 rows for the cuff and then I'm doing a standard heel flap and gusset and yeah. I feel like I've said this a million times so I'm sure all of you know. <laughs> but that <laughs> is all that I have in the way of knitting. Like I said, I just have not felt like doing much knitting. I haven't done any crocheting of any kind, which I need to because I have, ugh, I have a gift knit that I, or crochet. A gift crochet does not sound quite as smooth as gift knit. <laughs> but I have a gift um, crocheting project that I really need to get my move on, get it done. But you know, I'll, I'll finish it. <laughs> So that's all that I have in the way of yarn related projects. But I have a lot to talk about with sewing. <laughs> so the first thing I can't actually show you super well is a skirt. It is a finished object that I made and um, I took some pictures of it this morning so I will pop a couple up here so you can see what it looks like. This is a self drafted, very, very basic, it's literally rectangles of a skirt. I made this because I have been wanting to wear more skirts while I'm pregnant, but I don't like the super snug, clingy, like jersey, stretchy fabric skirts. I just don't find them to be flattering and yeah, I just don't like them. <laughs> that, that, that's what it boils down to. I, I've, I've never cared for them when I was not pregnant and that has not changed since being pregnant. And I have seen that a lot of very basic, simple, plain, like woven cotton fabric type skirts to purchase them are pretty expensive. Um, and I wasn't even sure if I was gonna like it, so I wanted to make myself one. So I was able to get this fabric from Joanne Fabrics for, it was on a clearance sale, so I got it really, really inexpensively. Unfortunately, there was only, I think it was actually less than two yards left, so I was not able to make it as like full and poofy as I would have liked to, but it works. <laughs> Um, and I basically took I, the full length of the fabric that I had by, um, I cut out a rectangle that was the almost two yards length by, I think I did 31 inches or 32 inches long. And I took that rectangle and that's the skirt portion. And then I had out of the other, rect the, the scraps that I had left over, I cut pockets and then a simple 
um, waistband piece that I could use because I wanted to do elastic in the back but not in the front because I was hoping to avoid having anything very tight on the front of my stomach. I have been so sensitive to anything the slightest bit snug, like not, not even tight, just there. <laughs> right at my waist um, rib cage, so basically right underneath of my bust. If there's anything tight there, it just makes me so uncomfortable. I feel like it makes my acid reflux worse. Um, it just does not work. So I hope to completely avoid that by just putting the elastic in the back waist of the skirt. However, I have noticed I put it on this morning and I have noticed that it does still feel like just a little bit, just a little bit tight. Just so frustrating, but it's it's not it's not uncomfortable. It's just I probably won't make another one for while I'm pregnant, just because yeah, for whatever reason I am so sensitive to it. Um, but overall, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I put snaps on the front of it, which totally would not have needed to do because it has elastic in the waist. Um, but I wanted that look. So it's more like they're fully functioning, like it unsnaps all the way and everything, uh, but it's, they wouldn't have to be there if I didn't want them to be there. That's about it. It was a very, very basic, simple skirt project. I didn't use any sort of a pattern, like I said, um, but I love the color of the fabric. I'm super happy because I have just a few tiny, tiny little scraps left over and I'm hoping to incorporate them into some sort of either a hot pad or maybe a mug rug or a coaster or something because I just, I love the fabric. I kind of wish I'd bought it earlier um, because then I could have made like a full on dress out of it. But sometimes I talk myself out of buying things. A lot of times I talk myself out of buying things. <laughs> the next finished project that I have is, did I bring the pattern in here? I did, okay. I mentioned this last week and I have finished since then finished it and it is the Pauline Alice cami dress and it is as cute as I hoped that it would be uh, I love this thing to death I am only mildly disappointed because it is not tight at all it has stretched to the fabric and it's it shouldn't be tight, but it's just snug enough right in that spot underneath of my bust, right at my red cage, that it's kind of uncomfortable to wear. So unfortunately, I will probably not be wearing this during my pregnancy, but I will definitely be able to wear it post-pregnancy, um, breastfeeding and everything. It'll be fine because it, it's a short dress, so it unbuttons. Um, and I... I love it. Honestly, I think I think I mentioned last time I did a full bust adjustment. I think what I should have done instead is maybe um, leave off the front bust darts, like just not do any darts there. And I think that would have eliminated the problem. Um, but like I said, I'll wear it after I'm done being pregnant and it'll be fine. Um, it's just so cute. I am absolutely in love with it. I am a little bummed that I can't wear it, but it is so comfy. It has that stretch to it. So it's got, um, this was a stretch shirting or a stretch chambray, I think that I got off of fabric.com a few years ago. So it has that ease in it, which is just brilliant. <laughs> and th this is the cami dress pattern. I have the old version of the pattern. I believe that there is a new version that's been released, but I have the old one. Um, it's only technically supposed to button to the waist, but and then have a side seam zipper, but I just made it button all the way down. Um, and I use snaps, not buttons. <laughs> because snaps are awesome. I love using snaps for my wardrobe. I use them 90% of the time, honestly. I hardly ever use buttons anymore, <laughs> but yeah, I am so, so pleased with how this turned out. Um, again, I think I mentioned this in my last episode. It had a bust dart 
and I did a full bust adjustment and then moved the dart from the waist to the side bust and split it into two darts. And I think it's one of those things where it's like technically I probably should have just eliminated one of those darts, <laughs> but it's fine. I'll be able to wear it in about three months, so it'll work out. <laughs> But there's that one. Um, it's all done. The skirt, I did not use the skirt portion of the pattern. I just used a rectangle of fabric that I gathered up into the waist. I put inseam pockets into it. So those are my finished objects. <laughs> and I'm very, very, very pleased with how they both turned out. Um, I think that they are going to be immensely wearable, even if I can't wear that one for a while. Then I am in the process of making two dresses. Um, I don't think anyone could say that I have a favorite dress pattern, um, but I'm starting to question that. <laughs> so as you have no doubt heard me mention a million times before, I am making two versions of the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Felicity dress. And I am in the process of, I'm basically making them up just at the same time. Um, so they're both at the same stage right now. I just put the zippers in last night in the back. Um, I have modified them. I'm making them breastfeeding friendly. Let me just kind of show you what we're looking at here really quick. Here we go. Um, again, I am not using the skirt portion of the pattern, just a rectangle standard gathered skirt. Um, it has a zipper in the back, and then that same thing with this one. This fabric is from Hobby Lobby. I just bought this. I bought this since the last time I filmed a podcast. Um, I was debating back and forth on what I was going to use this fabric for, and so I bought this fabric because I wanted to make a... I knew I wanted to make a Felicity dress, and then... I just knew that this fabric has sat in my sash for so long and I knew I wanted to make something that I would love and want to wear all the time and I told myself that it was okay to have favorites and that I could just make two of the same dress and that's fine. So that's what I did. This fabric is from fabric.com. I believe the, um, what do you call it? The What's the word I'm thinking of? The fabric design company um, is Wyndham Fabrics and it was from the collection, I believe it was like English Garden or something. I don't think it's available anymore, unfortunately. I bought this almost two years ago and I love it. It has little tiny animals all over it and I think it's just the cutest thing. This fabric, like I said, I purchased from Hobby Lobby, and it's just a simple cotton. Um, I believe it's still available. I'll try and link it down below if I can. Um, and it's just this really pretty floral. I love it. <laughs> so let's talk about the modifications that I have made to this pattern, because if you've followed my podcast for any length of time, you know I'm a little bit addicted to making this pattern. But once I found out I was pregnant, I knew that I needed to come up with some ways to make it breastfeeding friendly so that I was able to not just wear it um, for a short period of time. So I'm going to show you it on this one because this is the one that I have done with the same modifications. And again, this fabric is also from fabric.com and I bought it at the same time as I bought the this one. So I don't believe it's available anymore. So here we go. I'm making a size 16 and typically with this pattern it has a gathered neckline that is finished off with bias binding. It is super cute. I absolutely love it. Um, I love the style. It's sleeveless, also finished with bias binding at the sleeve and it's so comfortable and I love it. I love it that I can wear it in the summertime because it's sleeveless and it's nice and cool or in the wintertime I can wear it with cardigans or with a turtleneck underneath. I love this pattern to death. <laughs> Although to be fair, the funny thing is, is I have yet to actually use the skirt portion of the pattern that is included in the pattern. I have always done a gathered rectangle skirt which is kind of funny. For this version, what I did instead as you can see, 
The front neckline has been gathered up with elastic rather than just gathering stitches. And the reason I did that is because I needed it to be stretchy enough that I can pull it down to give access for breastfeeding. So I also added, I can get these open here, snaps at the shoulder so that basically if I am wearing it, I can unsnap it, pull it down, feed said baby, pull it back up, snap it back. And it was a super easy modification to make. Um, the back is exactly as it is in the pattern. Um, it's finished off with bias binding and the sleeve holes are finished with bias binding and then basically I just added a strip of um, a fabric and at the shoulders to finish off that seam. Let me show you closer up. I shouldn't have snapped it. There we go. I just added that on there as a place to put the snaps and that was that. The rest of the dress is made exactly as it says in the pattern. Um, center back zipper and then it has a button and a hand worked thread button loop. Um, and I love how it turned out. It was one of those things that as soon as I, I found out I was pregnant I started thinking about it because I realized like I wasn't really going to be able to wear my um, Felicity dresses postpartum because I need to be able to breastfeed and so I made me very sad <laughs> but I realized that I could I sew. I know how to hack patterns. I can make some modifications to this to make it work out and I did and I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I wasn't sure it was going to work and it did and I just, I was thrilled. <laughs> so that is how I did that and I am in the process of doing the same thing with these two. I have added my channel for elastic on the front neckline and now I just need to finish making the bias binding so that I can finish off the sleeve holes and the back and then I just need to um, put the snaps in. Finish off that and put the snaps in. And I'm at that stage on both of them. Um, well, and I don't have to hem them too. But I am so excited to have these dresses to wear. It's kind of nice to be able to make dresses that don't have, that don't have to have buttons on the front. Um, that it's, they basically look like normal dresses or wear like normal dresses rather than having um, always to have to have buttons on the front. So I am so happy to be able to have those. That <laughs> is all of the sewing that I have to share with you, but I wanted to talk about some sewing patterns that I have picked up because Joanne's had a sale a couple of different times on sewing patterns and I bought some. So let's talk about those really quick. Okay, so they had, well, never mind. I thought it was just two times, but apparently it was three times. Um, <laughs> so Joann's had their typical pattern sales that they have very regularly where they sell um, a specific brand of patterns for like $2 for a pattern. And um, so I picked up some Simplicity patterns, some Butterick patterns, and some McCall's patterns. And the first one that really caught my eye was the Simplicity, what is it, 9538. And it's this vintage reproduction pattern. And I liked it because it has elastic at the neckline. So it's like a peasant blouse, which I believe will probably be, be something I could use for breastfeeding because I can just pull it down over my shoulder. But I thought it was so interesting that this pattern, let's see if you can see it. Oh, it's gonna focus on my face. There we go. If you can kind of see there, this pattern has like this gusset under the sleeve, which I think is such an interesting thing that they have kept in the pattern. So I really wanted to try and make this and see if it was something that could be potentially pregnancy, but also breastfeeding friendly. Because um, let's be honest, that, that is going to be the reality of my life for a while. So it's something that I need to keep in mind. Uh, anything and everything that I make, I want it to be as wearable as possible. And I don't really... 
as I, I've mentioned before in previous episodes, I hate changing clothes. And so I don't really want to have outfits that I can only wear for a couple of hours at a time and then I have to basically undress to feed the baby. I would never wear those clothes. Like, I just, I wouldn't. So I was super thrilled to pick this one up. I think it's so, so cute. And honestly, I'm planning to go to Hobby Lobby later this week. They're having a fabric sale and um, these two dresses are using up the last of my cotton so that I only will have one piece of fabric left in my stash. <laughs> and so maybe when I'm at Hobby Lobby I'll look and see if I can find some fabric to try out this blouse pattern because I'm just so curious to see how this one would work out. There's that one. Then I purchased this apron pattern, Simplicity 9312. It's got the crossback style of apron. And I just love this style of apron. My husband bought me a linen apron um, off of Amazon a few months ago, just as a gift, and I love it. It's so, so nice. So I would love to have, especially this version right here, I think it's so cute. I love the pockets. And I would love to have a collection of aprons instead of just one. So that one. And then I purchased this one, Simplicity 9556, which I believe is a more recent release. And it is a really cute little, oh, there we go. I guess you could say lounge outfit, but it is intended to be I guess uh, specifically nursing or breastfeeding friendly sort of a pattern, which I was really surprised to see because I have not seen like any specific maternity or anything like that in any of the, I guess you could say big four pattern companies, McCall's, Vogue, Butterick, and Simplicity. So I saw this and this is the last piece of fabric I have in my stash. It is a mystery fabric that I bought from Walmart and it's a stretchy super soft jersey knit fabric and I was originally thinking when I bought it a dress but then the more I looked at it the more it just kind of screams pajama to me <laughs> and it's so so soft but I didn't really know what I wanted to make with it so I saw this pattern and I realized that it would put potentially be a really good fit because I could just make a really really cozy comfortable sort of an outfit. I love the look of these shorts or pants with the pockets on them. If you can see that. Maybe. <laughs> um, and I love that it, it is also um, breastfeeding friendly. So we'll see. I'm kind of torn. I don't love the fact that it's gathered in at the waist with elastic but I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, so, yeah, this was a bit of an odd one for me, um, but I'm curious to try it out. That was the simplicity patterns that I have, that I bought. And then I got some Butterick patterns, Butterick 6731. And it's this really cute looking blouse that kind of cinches in at the waist. And I, this one's definitely not in the specifically intentionally breastfeeding friendly category but I love how it like cinches in the waist and so I think this would look so pretty as a dress um but I just I don't know I fell in love with how it looks and if I did end up making a couple more skirts I could potentially have something like this to wear while I'm pregnant um if I just made the top version. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I love, I love how it looks. It looks so cute. So that one was a, I might not make it anytime soon, but I love how it looks. And then this one I am super happy about. It's Butterick 6686 and it's a very basic, simple button up shirt pattern. Here's those line drawings. And Actually, the inspiration behind getting this was the shirt that I'm currently wearing, which is a Old Navy top that I thrifted from Goodwill three, two, three, four years ago or something. And the thing that I love about it is that it does not have like proper sleeves. They're just grown on sleeves and it's so comfortable. Well, that's the same thing with this pattern. I have yet to see one like that. Um, it does not have actual like set in sleeves. They're just their sleeves like it's not a sleeveless top but it's just yeah 
<laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and I also do really like that version C, well, B and C have like little ruffle sleeves. I think that's su super cute too. Yeah, I really, really like this. And it's something that could very easily be modified into a dress. Um, and I'm really curious to try that one out. And then the last three patterns, um, if you watched my day in the life vlog that I posted late on Monday, I'll link it up above and down below. Um, you will have already seen these, but I'm just going to go over them again really quickly. I purchased some McCall's patterns. So I have two children's patterns, McCall's 6913 and 6304. This one I bought just because it's adorable and precisely the type of things that I would love to sew if and when I have a little girl. This baby is a boy, so I will not be using this one anytime soon, but it was too cute to resist. And then this one I purchased because I wanted the little romper pattern right here. I have a little bit of fabric left over from my cami dress that I think might be enough to squeeze a little baby boy romper out of, which I think would be just the cutest thing ever. If I have my dress to wear and he has a cute matching little romper, like, that would be cute. And then the last pattern is McCall 7974 and it is a dress pattern. This is definitely a postpartum dress pattern and I bought this because of Janelle from Rosary Apparel. I love her videos. She's so much fun to watch and I've been feeling very inspired after watching her videos to do sewing. And um, she made this dress in a couple of different videos. I'll link them all down below. And I just, I love, it looked so, so good. So <laughs> I went ahead and bought it and I'm thinking particularly this version of the dress that I would like to make. But also like that one's really cute too. I love the sleeves. <laughs> and also the tie. It's a cute pattern. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and bought this one as well. Like I said, it's because it, it's so fitted over the waist and I don't know that there would be an easy way to modify it to be bump friendly. So this is a postpartum dress that I can do, but it buttons down. So it's breastfeeding perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So that is all of the sewing and I guess you could say creative stuff that I have to talk about today. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about some books, but if you're not interested in that, that's fine. I'm, I will not be offended. But yeah, I've been just so inspired by it with my sewing and wanting to do all of the sewing, which has been absolutely brilliant. I feel like I haven't really wanted to do much in the way of sewing for like two plus years. Um, I've done bits and bobs here and there and I've definitely still made stuff but it's just not been quite the same um, and so it's been amazing the last few weeks to actually want to do all of the sewing stuff. Hence all of the sewing patterns. <laughs> but yeah I have a couple of books to talk about. I've also been feeling on a bit of a, a slump when it came to reading. Uh, I was just not feeling inspired or wanting to read by with any of the books that I started reading. So um, a few days ago over the weekend um, I decided to ignore all the books that I was currently reading and pick up something else. So I did and I picked up um, a couple of romance books. I can't remember. The first one was like Rules of a Proper Governess by Jennifer Ashley, I think. And I like romance. I am a true romantic at heart. I love a true love and happily ever afters. Um, and there are a certain amount of romance books that are like definitely in the romance genre that I have really enjoyed. Um, I don't love it when books have a lot of spice or basically when there's a lot of sex in the book. I don't love that. It's not my favorite. I think that way too much emphasis gets put on sex and it's just like I want to know about the characters and the plot and everything. So I tend to, I don't know, I guess kind of weed through the books. I'll start reading a book and if it gets too kind of smutty and dumb and there's no plot and it's just sex, 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 I'll skip on to it. I'll, I'll stop reading it. <laughs> I'll read a different book. Um, however, I do think that there are a lot of 
plots and stories in the romance genre that are really good and the characters are really good and I really enjoy reading them um, and so I will put up with a bit more sex than I would like because of the plot and the characters. So that was kind of the case with the Rules for a Proper Governess or whatever it was called. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, it was a very cute charming little story about kind of this, uh, her name was Roberta and she went by Birdie and he was Sinclair McBride. Not gonna lie, I like the fact that he's Scottish because I love Scotland. <laughs> but it was just kind of one of those classic like historical romance novels where it's the governess trope um, where the girl comes in to be the governess and they fall in love and get married and all of that. Um, I love it. It's probably why I love Jane Eyre so much. It's one of the best books of all time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh, I guess I should also say I'm definitely, definitely a historical romance reader. I do not read any if, I, I read, a, I've read a couple, but I do not really like modern romance novels. And I'm also very picky about the historical romance novels that I will read, just because I hate it when they put like a 21st century mindset of a, a, a female character into a historical 1800s book. Like it drives me batty. If a character starts doing that, I almost immediately stop reading the book and go and find a better one. <laughs> like I'm, I'm very, very picky about that. Yeah, so that one was a really cute one and I guess it kind of got me back into reading a little bit more. So I read a couple of, of Jennifer Ashley's other books. The one that I read, the governess one, was it's part of a series. So I read the first one in the series which was like The Madness of Ian McKenzie which had way more sex in it. Um, <laughs> It's just, it frustrates me so much when characters are just like, ah, oh, let's jump into bed together rather than like, let's get to know each other. But again, like, it's kind of part of the genre. I feel like most people want the the spice, if you will. As someone who is a very big classic novels reader, it's not always going to be my cup of tea. So I read that one. I read a, um, a couple of the other ones in the series and then it just kind of started annoying me. I was just like, there's just too much sex in these. Like, come on, can we please do something else? <laughs> do the plot, do the story. Because I love the characters. Like, that was why I was putting up with it is because the characters just were so interesting. It's this whole, like, I don't know, clan. They're not really a clan. They're kind of a clan. So it's like a family. They're, and so it's like brother after brother goes and is getting married. So I love the characters. I love the aspect that they're all Scottish. Like, it's awesome. But it just, it got too much. And so I was like, eh, nah, nah. <laughs> So I w picked up a couple of books by Mary Balog. Balog? I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. Um, she has this series that's called the Survivors series and it's basically these seven people that have went through some terrible experience in the Napoleonic War? That is not how you pronounce that word. But it basically it's in the Napoleon Wars time period. It's, it's post that and they all went through these terrible experiences in the war and then they were brought together by the Duke of Stanbrook. I think. And they all spent three years together at the Duke's house and basically recovered and kind of came back to sanity, if you will. And so she has this whole series of books where it goes through each one of them finding their significant other. There is still spice in them, but it is much, much less. And I feel like it gets less as the books go, as the series goes on. And it's much more focused on the characters and the story and everything, which I very much appreciate. So I read, I read a few of those and then this morning, well I started it a couple days ago but then I was reading more of it this morning. So far it is like the cutest book. I'm really enjoying it. It is called Never Seduces Scott by Maya Banks, I think. I hate the titles and I hate the covers of these books because sometimes they're so misleading. They just look so raunchy <laughs> when they're really sweet, cozy sort of stories. And one of the things that I'll do is I'll basically Google search and try and find sweet, wholesome romances, historical romance novels, blah, 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 with nice characters and all of that. Um, and this was one of the suggested ones that I found. And what initially really made me interested in reading it was the fact that the main girl character is deaf. 
and I am hard of hearing. I have um, mild to moderate hearing loss in certain areas of my hearing range, so I can I can still function like like normal and everything. It just makes it so. I don't always understand what people say, um, and a lot of times I have to ask people to repeat it, and it makes me very dependent upon seeing people's faces and like what their lips are doing. So COVID with the whole mask thing made it very difficult for me to like understand and communicate with people. In this book, she's deaf, and I just love it when there are deaf or hard of hearing people or characters in books and it's a good story. It just I don't know, I feel like I can relate to it. I'm like, ah, I haven't completely lost my hearing. I'm still like at 90% functioning level, but I can understand some of the struggles because I deal with it. <laughs> and um, basically so far it's about these two Scottish clans, of course, because it's about Scotland, and the king has just put an edict. They're, these two clans are basically, they hate each other and they're fighting all the time. And the king has decreed that the laird of one clan must marry the daughter of the laird of the other clan. So obviously both clans are like, why would you do this to us? And they're super upset. The daughter is deaf. Everybody thinks she's kind of not right in her head. She had an accident about three years before the beginning of the story and she couldn't, she can't hear anything anymore. She has definitely kind of exaggerated her deafness because she was originally betrothed to this man that she really did not want to get married to and so after she um, she was sick for a couple of weeks after her accident and she couldn't hear anything and it was really confusing and overwhelming and whatnot and by the end of it everybody kind of just assumed that she had some sort of a mental problem. And she didn't dissuade them from that because she was still trying to figure out what the heck <laughs> had happened and she really did not want to marry this man and her father wouldn't believe her when she was telling her why she didn't want to marry him. So it was a way to get out of it basically. So everybody thinks she's just kind of not right in the head anymore when she's just deaf and she reads people's lips like she's really good at reading people's lips. I just I like it so much because she's they get married and then she goes back to the other clan with her new husband um but what makes me so happy is that I'm not I'm like I don't I think on my kindle um it said that it, I'm like 20 30 percent through the book and she's already communicated this to her new husband and it makes me so happy. I hate the miscommunication trope. It is one of my least favorite ones of all time. I hate it so much when the whole book goes by, when if the characters had just had a conversation, then all of this drama and ridiculousness wouldn't have happened. So I'm very excited to see where it goes from here. I just finished reading that part this morning and it just made me so happy because there's all this other stuff happens and then her new husband has this epiphany. He's just like, wait, you just can't hear. There's nothing wrong with you. You just can't hear anybody. And she's just like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like this really cute little scene and everything. I don't know what the spice or smut level will be in this book. That is still to be determined. The story so far has been really good and I really enjoyed it. So that's kind of what I've been reading recently. Uh, kind of a tangent away from my Anne of Green Gables and Irish Country Doctor and the other books that I was reading. Um, I just needed something like a, a, a refresh or restart or something. So these books are very, very easy reading. <laughs> I can read one of them. I think um, unfortunately my library doesn't have the physical copies for most of these books and so they're all either in the Libby app or on my Kindle but for one of them I was able to read it in like four hours total time because my the app told me that's how long I had read the book. That's obviously like split up in different chunks but so they're super fast and easy reads and it's been really nice because like I said I just haven't been feeling very motivated to do much reading um, or very interested in it but it's like I want to read but the books that I'm reading I'm just like eh. And so knitting and reading have kind of just gone their merry little way so I'm really happy to be able to pick up a few of these books and just chill and enjoy them. But that is that. 
I feel like I have talked about books enough. I might make another book video here and you can let me know what you think about that. Uh, talking about some of the romance books that I have particularly enjoyed or some of the romance books um, or what my requirements are for romance, historical, novel, whatever sort of books and some of my favorite ones. I might make a video of that. I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, ooh, that would be a fun video to make. I could, I could really enjoy making that one. Other than that, what have I been up to? Nothing. Life has just been the same old, same old kind of working from home, housework, sewing, reading. I did finally make a... I didn't really make it. I already had it made. I, I'm switching my blog back from WordPress to Blogger. And I did that this week and I wrote a blog post. I will link it down below. I wrote a blog post about my one of my Deer and Doe Maya Sotis dresses. Yeah, I just, I've been feeling uninspired or unwilling to do much of blogging because I don't love WordPress and I never have, but it seemed to have some more customizations, but then they're so picky and their fees are stupid because I get my domain name through Google because, or through Google domains because I can get it for about $12 a year, which is the cheapest that I found it. But then for WordPress, they require that in order for you to use a custom domain, if it's not through WordPress, you're required to pay for some sort of a plan in order to do the, I don't know what it's called, domain routing or whatever it is, which is, mm. Mm. It has always ticked me off. And I've paid for it for the past couple of years because I don't, I don't have the wordpress.org one where it's like a self-hosted, it's just through wordpress.com. Um, I am not tech savvy enough to do coding and all that stuff and I have no interest in learning how to get better at that. Um, and so I've been, I don't know, I've just, I just realized over the past couple of months and whatnot that I was just really wanting to do just the basic old-fashioned blogging that I did when I first first started blogging years and years ago <laughs> and so I've been going back and forth on it and I was like well you know with WordPress there's always the option for potentially making a store on there or should I do Squarespace or which website building program should I use and I decided enough of all of that just go with Blogger you love how it looks you love the formatting and everything just go with that and cross the bridge of any type of a store front later because um, eventually I would like to sell art prints and um, stickers and those sorts of things. <laughs> Maybe some hand-dyed yarn. I keep thinking about dabbling and getting back into doing some hand-dyed yarn again. Um, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So if you are interested, I do have my blog. It is up and running. I'm, that was why I was taking pictures of my skirt today is I'm gonna write a blog post about that. And right now there's only like four or five blog posts that I moved from my WordPress blog over to Blogger because they were the ones that I wanted on my blog. They're all kind of like the creative sewing or knitting or whatever related projects. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out. But that is all that I have to say. I have some sewing that I want to work on today and I am going to try and be very intentional about making some time for journaling today. So I am going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Thank you so so much for hanging out with me today and watching. Um, if you have any sort of historical romance novels that you absolutely love or authors that you love that you think I would be interested in, please put them down below. I would absolutely love to hear about them and potentially read them. If you have anything that you're working on, sewing or knitting wise that you're just absolutely loving, again, I would love to talk about it. I hope that you have a wonderful day wherever you are, that you are feeling well and healthy and things are going smoothly for you. Thank you again for supporting my channel, watching the video, liking, subscribing, whatever it is that you do. I appreciate you so much. Um, it has been very exciting for me to see a little bit of channel growth over the last few weeks. I've gone up a few subscribers and it just, it makes me happy. I would love to build this up to the point where I could get just enough subscribers that I can have a little bit of side income to support my creative endeavors, um, sewing or knitting or whatever. So I just appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to sit and watch and hang out with me um, and interact. It is much, much appreciated. So thank you <laughs> and with that i will close things off here um yeah i hope that you have a wonderful day and i will see you very soon on the next one bye